Me too, man. I'm, I'm super excited. Um, your story kind of inspired me and inspired the people that we were with um, at the conference, man. And I wanted to get you on here because we do have some young fellas on here and we got some people, you know, going through adversity, going through, you know, consistency problems. And I mean, I'll start it off with, you know, how old are you? You know, how long have you been doing it? And kind of explain your journey of, of how you got here. Yeah, man, absolutely. Well, again, dude, it's uh, always an honor to be on these calls. I think this is amazing. Always being able to, um, you know, pour back into, you know, the your guys' team, anyone's team, you know. Uh, but yeah, man, I, uh, so what's crazy is I started FFL when I was 18. Uh, I was 19 at convention and now I'm 20. So you can figure that I turned 20 about three days ago. So happy belated uh, birthday, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. So about, um, I would say it was the end of 2020. I started with family first life. Um, and man, honestly, I was just looking for something, man. I was, I was broke. I was, dude, I came, so what happened was just to back up to kind of give, you know, um, everybody, you know, um, you know, exactly the full story. When, when I initially started, I was 18. I moved out to Florida with my brother. Um, what happened was, is I lived in Louisiana, um, nearly all my life. And when I was, I told myself when I turned 18, I was gone. Like, dude, I'm out of here. Like, I'm tired of, you know, the swamps and, you know, just everything. It was just nothing to do. Everything in Louisiana, I was ready to get out. The only thing that are good is the food. So uh, when I turned 18, uh, the month after I turned 18, I was gone. And the thing was, I had no, I didn't know where I was going to go, what I was going to do, who I was going to depend on, who I was going to know. None of that. I just wanted out. Uh, so me and my brother came down to Florida, man. We just, uh, my dad had a old van, a really old, a plumbing van at that. It was a terrible van. It was like 300,000 miles on the van. He's like, Hey, it was, it was, it was, it was at the bottom of the barrel, dude. Like it was so bad that he just gave it to us. So he gave us wow. the van. The last money that we had, uh, we used that towards the U-Haul, put all of our stuff in the back. We came down to Florida. Now the thing was, is when we got down here, it was right when COVID hit. So people were, everybody was losing their jobs. So it was hard enough for us to find a job. Uh, so long story short, me and my, I, um, I was on the phone with my friend when I was here in Florida and he said, Hey dude, on Monday, on Tuesday, I made $500. I was like, dude, 500 bucks in a day, dude, you know, put me on, what are you doing? Um, and he said, yeah, I'm selling life insurance. I said, dude, absolutely. You know, so he was with a different company and I was like, yeah, absolutely. Put me on. Um, we got uh, his manager. I reached out to the local guy here in Tampa and he's like, yeah, here's the course. He sent me the course and I went into a Goodwill parking lot. I couldn't study from home because I was I didn't have a home. <laughs> you know, I went yeah. to a Goodwill parking lot, with, you know, and I studied for about 10 minutes. And I told myself, dude, there's no way I'm about to go through a 40 hour course uh, and study all this material and try to attempt to take a test. Uh, so I, 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 I quit three months later, I found myself in the same exact position I was in when I initially tried to reach out and, you know, uh, get my life insurance license. And, but this second time around, I did a lot of my own research. So I reached out to family first. I reached out to all these different IMOs, all these different companies. And obviously I was young, but dude, FFL was a no brainer. I mean, all the different things that it offered all, you know, the high comp, everything. I mean, just if you, if you're selling, if you're selling life insurance, FFL is definitely the vehicle to be in. So I reached out to a local guy here in uh, Tampa. They just opened up their office and uh, he said, dude, he's like, dude, meet me in my office in like an hour. I was like, dude, bet. I was like, dude, this guy here is, <laughs> he's really aggressive. I was like, that's the first, I was like, you know what? I have nothing to lose. I'm broke as it is. Heck, I might as well go. So I went, man, and not to know that that sink, dude, that phone call it completely, you know, that me going to that office that day completely changed my and, whole life. And, and he I, told you to go there. He said, no, nah, you're coming. Come here in an hour. And you're like, okay. This is basically what he told me. <laughs> like, if you're serious, he's like, you'll be in my office in an hour and a half. I was like, what? I was like, dude, well, let's go. So when I, I showed, I pulled up, it's Eric Anthony. He's, he's just thinking, he's a nut. Like, he's crazy. But he, he literally, his intentions are the best in the world. They really are. He's like... If it wasn't for him, man, I, I mean, I wouldn't, you know, be where I'm at today. But um, he's like, meet me at my office in an hour. I get to his office, super hyped up guys. Like, man, I'm, I'm ready to work. So we go to his office. He's like, all right, one quick thing. Are you licensed or are you unlicensed? I was like, 18, I don't have, a, I don't have an insurance license. He's like, all right, 
what's your name, email, date of birth, and like whatever he needed. I was like, I gave it to him. I was like, dude, what is, what is this guy doing? He like punched in some numbers. He paid for everything to schedule all that. He's like, perfect. He's like, all right, so you got seven days to take the test and there's the door. I was like, what? I mean, seven days to take the test? What are you talking about? Uh, he's like, yeah, you got seven days. If you're serious about this, you'll pass it. I was like, wow, okay. So this guy, I don't know. It was just the way he come across, man. It was like, let's go. And, and I went home. Seven days later, I passed the test. And man, it's been a crazy journey ever since. That was how I got started. And that's what I was doing before. And uh, yeah, man, I, I, uh, when I started, bro, I was, I was the worst dude. If there was any bad agents, like that was me. Like I didn't want to, <laughs> it, it was terrible, but man, the thing was, is my thing was, is man, I had no way out. There was no plan B. What was I going to do? Go like, if I had a bad day in the field, what was I going to say? Oh, let's, let's go do some Uber eats. Like, no, I wasn't going to do that. You know? And I didn't, yeah. I didn't, didn't want to go to college. I already went to school for 12 yeah, years. Yeah, so. exactly. And like that, that's to my next point, man. I'm glad you said that if you had a bad day, like, so if you had a bad week, what did you do the following week? And like, how did you, for, for being 18, 19 years old, how did you stay so consistent in your mindset? Just like, well, bring me through it, man. Cause I, like I said, I left, you know, left high school, went right to work two days after. And then I joined the military. Like I had structure you didn't have any like structure. So how did you stay in the mindset and mentality of consistency? Yeah, man. Um, my thing was, is when I started, I was very inconsistent and I saw what the, the results that followed being inconsistent were just absolutely disgusting. It was so bad because you mean, if you get chargebacks, lead debt, personal expenses, I mean, it's just, it's terrible. And uh, I remember, I'll never forget when I initially started, I, I plugged into everything. I was plugged into trainings, podcasts, hitting people up. Dan may not remember, but what is crazy, last year is December, I think, 28th. I met him. You probably didn't even remember because I was, I didn't, I, I was, I probably, the most families I helped was like 10. Uh, but I was like, dude, I was like, Dan, what's up? I was like, because I saw his numbers. He hit Hall of Fame. I was like, man, this is awesome. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, my thing was, is I just saw so many people just absolutely crushing it, man. And I was like, man, why can't that be me? So why can't I be the one, you know, receiving my red jacket? Why can't, you know, I go out there and serve and help 10 to 20 families a week. And, uh, well, the thing was, is like, like I said, when I initially started, this is something very specific, but this is something that completely changed everything for me was dialing from eight in the morning till eight o'clock at night. Cause I'm not good at dialing. Like that completely changed everything for me. Now, obviously the first time you ever get on the phone, the first time you ever go in the home is the worst you're ever going to be. So you only have room to improve. Uh, and I realized that. So now obviously don't take me that long, but that was the type of sacrifice I was willing to put in, in the beginning. And that's what changed everything for me was like, if, if it's five o'clock that night and I have three appointments, I'm going to keep dialing, you know, and I'm going to start at eight o'clock in the morning and I'm going to stop at eight o'clock that night. You can get one appointment an hour. I told myself that I can get one appointment an hour and I can at least have 12 appointments. If I dial from eight to eight, no lunch, no nothing. And I was just locked in yeah. and that changed everything for me. It was December of, it was December of 2020. I dialed from eight o'clock in the morning to eight o'clock at night. And even now people will ask me like, dude, what did you do? What did you do? What did you, I, I mean, I didn't do anything. Like anybody can do exactly what I did. It's just the only difference is I was willing to put in the time. That's it. That's all it was. So if you get in front of 30 people a week, you can have, you can be missing an eyeball, have a half an arm and sink and be ball. It doesn't matter. You literally, whatever, if you get in front of 30 people a week, you're going to sit with 20 and you're going to help 10 to 15 families. You do that consistently over the span of 52 weeks. Like for example, I, you know, I, I, whatever I helped, I averaged that out through 52 weeks and I only helped 12 families a week. Like that was it. And that was literally, I sat with 30. I, I'm sorry. I put 30, I sat with 20 and I helped 12. On hey, Danny, can you mute? Yeah. So that, I mean, that's awesome, man. And a little bit on the consistency side of things, um, growing up, you know, consistency is all around us, whether it's the gym, going through school, grade, you know, K through 12, um, sports, everything like that. You stay consistent every week. You get better every week. You have to see the other side. You have to know what's on the other side. And you did that, you know, without somebody pushing you. And that's awesome. And, um, the best piece of advice that you got for anybody, but especially for the younger crowd, you know, the younger people finding this opportunity. So like one piece of advice for both of, for anybody. And then the younger, younger crowd. Yeah. 
Uh, so my best piece of advice for anybody is to, um, you know, this, this, the FFL system is a copycat system. It's literally plug and play. Like there's no, like when I started, man, I was trying to do my own thing and I figured out real quick that that, that wasn't going to get like, dude, I was, I wasn't making any money. Like if I was, they told me to run eight, I was going to run four and I'd have two no shows and two no sells and I didn't make no money. And I spent money on like, I just stopped doing it my own way. That's it. That's literally the only thing that changed. And that would be the best piece of advice that I would give to anyone. Literally like people like, and not only reach out, to, don't reach out to people, reach up to people. Like I wasn't like the reason why I got Dan's number at that conference that time, which is crazy. He probably doesn't even remember that. Why? I mean, was because he was a HOF producer. Of course I was going to want to talk to him because, you know, he, he helped, you know, almost 500 families, you know? So that's one thing that I, I was looking to do myself. And that's the best piece of advice I would give to anyone is don't reach out to people, reach up to people. Cause dude, you can reach out. There's, there's a million people. There's a, there's so many people that are doing five, 10, you know, helping five, 10 families reach out to people like, like Shaddy, like Shaddy. I don't even know. Shaddy. I don't even know where to start with that guy. Like, he's a monster. Dude, he's a monster. <laughs> he's the dude I've ever saw. Like I met him for the first time at conference. He's probably the most humble guy I've ever met in my life. And that them are the type of people you want to reach out to, you know? Um, and, and that's what I done for myself. And that's the best of a piece of advice I would, uh, give to anybody and then the best piece of advice i'll give the younger agents is 30 appointments will solve everything okay you're gonna because when i started i'm like man i'm gonna go into people's homes and they're like who's this chubby cheek fluffy head kid get out of my house <laughs> like i thought that to myself but once i moved all the doubts all the thoughts that you know all the fears all the different things that i got in my own head about and 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 literally like even to this day i still have i don't know man i still have you know, I still get nervous walking up to doors, but uh, the thing is, it's just, if you, if you book eight, you're going to go knock on the doors. I promise you, like, you're going to, you're not going to drive. Like I drive about an hour and a half to my appointments typically. And if I drive that far out, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to serve the family. I'm going to appropriately challenge them, you know, and just removing all doubts, removing all fears. Uh, because I always knew at the end of the day, if I got in front of enough people, cause guys, I'm not like I, I'm like when you when it comes to being good in the home I'm not your guy when it comes to being good in the phone I'm not your guy now when it comes to putting the time in we can talk all day you know because I'm willing to put in the time week in and week out and literally you do that 52 weeks out of the year you won't like like I said I think I averaged about 12 families a week and that was just because I got in front of a lot of people all right that's awesome you hear that bar 30 appointments <laughs> and um lastly before i open up to like q a man what's the biggest or most unorthodox type thing that you did like something that you weren't told to do but you did anyways that kind of helped you progress in this in this business yeah um i mean i don't know a lot of things within ffl are plug and play i mean i do have some unorthodox things that i do i, I don't know maybe some things on the phone um, I, I don't really know. I mean, I have added a lot of things myself. One thing that I, I, um, a couple of things that I added, um, I don't really know, man, this, this system is <laughs> like copycat, yeah. you know, like I, I would love to take credit for something, but I can't because I just, do you I mean, do anything routine wise? Do you do anything that kind of gets you right that, you know, other people aren't doing, do you read certain books? Do you watch certain podcasts to kind of get you in the, in the right mindset, I guess? Can, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I am, uh, I'm not a big book reader. Either am I. Know I. A lot of good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I mean, I have, a, I mean, I've got a couple of things I could, I could share. I mean, something that really helped me with younger guys, you know, building credibility. I, I mean, I don't really know in terms of like anything I do personally, not really. I mean, I need, <laughs> I, need I need to go to the gym more. I know that. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, I remember my, uh, <laughs> my manager, like, he's like, I don't know. He's like, you know, the girl's going to take the guy with a lot of money with the pot belly over the ripped up guy that's broke, <laughs> you know? So, you know, ultimately, um, man, I just, I literally, and I know it's so simple to say, man, and I, I don't, it was just this, this FFL system is just plug and play, man. You, you start dialing at seven 30 in the morning, you get your, your, get your appointments week in and week out and uh, in the home being super assumptive, like Bob, you know, I'm not, we're not here to, you know, we're here to accept this or decline this. 
you put them in a spot where they have to do that. It, it gently puts them in a place where they have to make a decision, you know, cause when I'm in the home, I mean, my first, my first 50 homes I went into 48 of them told me they didn't want to give me their social. And it was yeah. like, what in the world? So uh, what I started doing, you know, is just building a lot of credibility, a lot, tons of credibility. Cause when I go into a house now, I show them my personal ID, my driver's license, everything. I show them my state license, all of that. And I'm like, Bob, look, here's my, all my personal information is on this ID. Look, if you're, if you're ever in my area, you want to come knock on my door, you can as well. Once I added that line, which I got from Chris Cazares, dude, everything changed. Like it literally, I never had another problem with a, a, a bank account. No problem with socials because they trust you. At the end of the day, that's what helped me, man, was just caring for clients. It didn't matter because, man, I go into people's homes now. I'm like, holy God, I didn't know my grandson was coming over. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, well, yeah. help, right? I'm here to show you that I care. I'm here to appropriately challenge you. I'm here to, you know, show you that, you know, I'm, I'm, I mean, you filled the lead out. You, they're interested. I promise you, you know, you have to appropriately challenge certain clients to get them to move. Right. And then when you gently put them in a place where they say they want to think about it, well, Bob, unfortunately, what I'm going to have to do for you is fill out this refusal of coverage form. Okay. So we're just going to state that any coverage that was offered today was refusing by, you know, was refusing by the client and you make them sign it, you know, and if they don't want to do it then say, well, then we're going to accept it, you know, because I don't know about you guys, but I've never had a client call me back ever. And I was tired of giving my cards out because I could give that to clients, you know? Yep. So that's one thing. It's like, we're taking it or we're not, you know, showing them, asking a lot of questions. You know, I got that from Jonathan Porcina, just asking a ton of questions and whoever asks the most questions wins, you know? And because when I initially started, I was the worst ever in the home. I was terrible. I was so bad. It was just because I would go into the home. I'd be like, you filled the lead out. Now, and then I'd get into the financial inventory, write some quotes up, show them. And they'd be like, well, well buddy, well, can we keep this? I'm like, it's like yeah. they wanted to think about it or, you know, it's just um, being and, super, super direct, even, even being a younger guy. It's just, it's very helpful. And that refusal form, is that something that you made up? You got printed out? Um, so I actually have it on my iPad. Um, okay. What it is, is this just stating basically, can you guys still hear me? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, they can. I can. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So I'm just going to read off what it says. So basically what it says is, um, so if they, if they don't want to accept the coverage, this is what it is. The signature and a date under the refusal of coverage form. So basically all it's saying is I acknowledge that I had, a can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Okay. Awesome. So all it is stating, it says right here. Um, I acknowledge that I had initially requested coverage to protect my family. Now I am refusing to protect my family or to receive coverage. I am aware of the financial burden I am placing on my loved ones if I die without coverage and you'll be removed from the system database. So I make them, they're going to sign that and date it before I leave to, for them to acknowledge that they were refusing to protect their family. And that's literally it. And then if they don't, then, you know, you just, you just did. But the bottom line is, is it really puts clients in a position where they're forced to make a decision because I don't know about you guys, do when a client tells you, you know, they want to think about it, you won't ever remove that, but that's the worst feeling in the world, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, man, just appropriately challenge them and all the fears and doubts about being young, it's removing them completely. Perfect, man. I really do appreciate your time, man. That was awesome. Um, from point A to point B, I mean, that was, that was, that was amazing. Um, I guess we'll open it up for, um, some Q and A. And if anyone's got any questions, um, type it in the chat. Type it in the chat. That way I can uh, read it off. I'm going to go before anyone can type a message because I got a question. <laughs> for you, Sam, man. Um, so, dude, in order, you know, from going broke to working your ass off to getting this thing up and going, you had to be doing stuff that made people believe in you. And I know you're super humble, so it might be a hard question to answer. But if we can get like any of like just honest feedback on stuff that you did out of like the very gate to help people believe in you, right? But obviously you were working and someone once taught me like, you know, you got to go to work in order for me to work with you. So yeah. what are some of the things that you did out of the gate to get support, to get your business to the next level? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for myself, it was number one, self-belief. You know, I knew if I saw all these guys doing it, 
I, I could like I was gonna go F and do it. Like I, I'm not like if 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 some of these guys that were hitting Hall of Fame, I was like, dude, there's no way I can't do that. You know, uh, so something that really helped me that pushed me forward was um, you know, reaching out a lot, man. Like I, I didn't, when I got your number last in, in 2020, which was over, you know, a long time ago, um, you know, I didn't know who, you know, all I knew is you were a winner. You were somebody that was winning at a high level. And that's who I wanted to talk to, you know, talking to the Tyler Adams, the, the singing Stephen Jeered, all of them. Right. So, uh, for myself, man, did something that helped me put, you know, really push me forward was just, I didn't, I mean, I had like my parent, they believed in me, you know, um, my, 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 my mentors believed in me, but at the end of the day, man, nothing's going to happen if you don't go to F and work. And that was what I had to, my first three months, dude, I was the worst agent in the whole company. And I, I can honestly say that I was really, really bad. And I had a lot of improvement to do, you know, and, and even to this day, I have a lot, you know, a tons of room for improvement. Uh, but the thing was, is like, just always just working my butt off week in and week out, man, that fixes everything because, you know, um, like for, for, I mean, even yourself, you know, if, if, for example, you know, I would say, I would assume that if Shaddy didn't see you doing the numbers, you would have, he probably wouldn't be where he's at, you know? So, uh, that was the thing is just looking up to people that were doing it and, uh, you know, being a student in the game. And like I said earlier, this system that FFL has is just copycat. You plug it in play. Like nothing that I've done have I come up with on my own. Not one thing. I just literally implemented things from so many different producers. Like something like you would get on a podcast, the Monday morning wake up podcast. Like you may, there might be a word track that completely changed everything for you. Come into the office. That that's lit. I wouldn't be in this business if it wasn't going to the office week in and week out you know we have like six hall of fame producers in our office so we're just surrounded by winners and it literally helps significantly but yeah man just pushing forward and working my butt off you know like i said week in week out because at the end of the day i mean i'm not i'm not a very likable guy I'm, i don't have i'm not verbally advanced none of that it's just i get i get in front of 30 people a week that's it that's all i do that's and honestly like Anybody that's asked me up to this point, like, dude, what is the secret sauce? You know, what are you doing? Yeah, everyone I'm, wants the secret, the secret sauce. It's, you know, work hard, trust the process and trust where the process takes you. Exactly. Yeah. And um, someone asked you, do you sell um, a full mix of like final expense, mortgage protection, IULs, annuities? How's your lead flow? Like, what's your schedule look like? For leads? Yeah. Uh, this past year, I sold every single lead you can think of, <laughs> instant internet life, FEX, mortgage, old mortgage, new mortgage, uh, mail drops, BPL, everything. Uh, when you're that, because I mean, Dan, I think is out of, I'm sure you're out of Orlando. Like he, know, like uh, Florida, <laughs> Florida is a pretty saturated place. But the thing is, is we have like 25 different lead vendors that FFL offers. If you, you like, you can use half of them. And if you want 30 appointments in a week, I promise you, you're going to get them. The only reason why people don't is I guess a lack of self-belief, man, because one thing that I struggled with in the beginning was investing. Dude, I, it took me four or five months to invest 2000 a week in leads. And when I initially started, I was spending 300 there, 500 there. I would, you know, let's say for example, I would, I would spend $500 on some internet leads, I would, I don't, man, it was just, I was confused, you know? And one month my manager said, dude, how about this, this month you spend 2000 every single week on leads, non-negotiable 2000. I'd done that dude. And that month I helped 71 families. And I was like, wow, why, Unreal. why didn't I, Unreal. why didn't I do that three months ago? Like, dude, this is so from that moment on, that was in April of last year was when I done that. And April was when I helped the 71 families. And from that, from April to the De December 31st, I didn't spend less than $2,000 every single week. And I made that a non-negotiable for myself. And I done that. And not only does that, you know, it, if you automate your lead flow, it automates your deposits and it forces you to go to work. Because I promise you, if $2,000 hits your bank account for leads, <laughs> you're going to run some leads. And that's the thing is just putting myself in a position where I had to work week in and week out and uh, it literally, the results followed. Like I, I look back on my year and I think to myself, imagine if I would have started spending 2000 in January and not wait until April, you know, just small tweaks. And, and when you get in front, like 
30 people a week, 52 weeks, that's 50, that's over a thousand. Like you probably sit with a thousand people. You sit with a thousand people, like, dude, you can literally, like you, you just every single house you go into, you're slowly improving. And like I said, the, 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 the first time you ever start is the worst you'll ever be. And you know, you only have room to improve. Amazing, dude. Amazing. <laughs> Uh, any questions? Put them in the put them in the uh, chat. Man, wow, that's an incredible story, man. I'm glad you're doing so well. I'm glad you're staying with it and you know killing it out there. How's your agency growing? Yeah, man, it's um, it's it's doing. I'm I'm working on that. <laughs> I uh, so one thing that I I do have a, a good bit of guys uh, right in business. It's just, I have to learn to empower people better, you know, and I'm sure that is something that, you know, a lot of us struggle with because at the end of the day, I can sell for the next, I can sell for the next 10 years, you know, but if I'm not hiring people, I'll be doing that for the rest of my life. Uh, but yeah, man, the agency's growing. Uh, we're recruiting. We're just trying to. All right, do it. cool. Yeah. And if, uh, if, if, if someone wants, if someone watching wants to uh, work with you, how do they get in touch with you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, my Instagram is my first and last name, Michael, just how it sounds, Sandman, just how it sounds, underscore. And then also my phone number, uh, 813-600-9826. Yes, sir. Perfect. All right, man. Well, we'll give it a little bit more time. Anyone got any more questions? Make sure you guys are putting it in there. Don't want to hold you up too, too long, Michael. Hey, uh, Mike, I don't, I don't have any questions. I mean, I got tons of questions for you, but you know, <laughs> one piece of advice on what you just said, dude, the way that you just empowered this group, just by speaking out of your heart, dude, what you do each and every day and what, you know, Eric Anthony did for you. You want to build an agency, dude, dude just <laughs> be you, man. Dude. Be just give out the vibes that you just hit, did here today and challenge people just like Eric challenged you get on just like you get uncomfortable in the home, asking those tough questions, ask those tough questions with agents, right? The more you ask those tough questions, the more you actually care about them, dude. And once you got that down, man, <laughs> there's no doubt your agency is going to be blowing past a million bucks here in no time. So, uh, dude, I appreciate you hopping on here, Mike. Yeah, absolutely, man. Thank you so much. I, that's, I, that, man, it's in the works. I've got to just make sure I do that all day, every day, seven days a week. Exactly, yeah. man. Well, I appreciate your time. I'm sure we all, um, we all appreciate your time, man. I know you're a busy man and you took the time out to talk to us and I appreciate it and have a good one. All right. Yes, sir. Thank you guys so much. I, uh, it was an honor being on this call.